Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, I'm Marianne Reed, and this is Postscript. I'm sitting here with Duffy Robbins, and it is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers. We just have a couple more questions for Duffy, um, so let's get started. All right, let's do it. Why do you think we tend to have unrealistic expectations of one another within our own families? Well, you know, I, actually, you know, C.S. Lewis talked about this in a broader sense. He said that he said that, you know, if we have these desires in our heart for for um, for a perfect love and perfect justice and, and perfect forgiveness then we should probably follow them to their source. And I, I think in a sense, what that reflects is that all of us still have in some kind of, uh, you know, primal way, we all have memories of Eden. And what I mean by that is that theologically, we know where, what families are meant to be. We, that there's something in us that longs for um, in a deep way. We, we often are sold a cheaper product and we'll try to settle for a cheaper product in the way that a man with a limp will try to live his life limping rather than do the procedure required to, to walk properly. But, but deep down in his heart and in his leg, he knows it's not supposed to be like this. And so I think that we all of us, um, even, even someone who's grown up in a family where there was, you know, abuse, uh, even those of us who grow up in families where it's great. I mean, th there's still that sense that it's, we all know what it's like to go, man, this conversation didn't go well. I didn't understand that. I was hurt by that. And I believe it's because we have this memory of Eden. We have this, this sense that God has put in us that for which we were created. And, and that's because we're created in the image of God. That kind of community that's reflected in the Trinity between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that's the kind of community for which we were created. And, and uh, on this side of, of glory, you know, we're probably always going to feel that it's not quite there. Even the, the, the married couple that deeply love each other, mm -hmm. there are times when they, they hurt each other and they fall short. And, uh, and so I think that's because God gave us those desires. I think they're God-ordained desires. Um, that's why grace is important because I can sort of I can sort of be so frustrated with you that you don't fulfill that desire and without going, well, wait a minute, I don't fulfill that desire either. You know, we both of us have fallen, both of us mm -hmm. are broken. And I'm never gonna be able to to do that. It's it's sort of the uh, it's sort of the old thing of trying to fill up a bucket with a hole in it. There's a hole in our soul. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I think there'll always be that sense of it didn't quite hit. There's a little bit of a miss there, even in really, really healthy families. What, can you talk about, what about when we take initiative and reach out to somebody, but there's no response? Yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, it would be great. It, it, today, you know, talking about initiative, I talked about, um, about saying I'm sorry, I talked about serving, you know, random acts of grace. It would be great if, if, you know, you were to take initiative or a family member takes initiative and that just, you know, all of a sudden breaks the dam or the log jam and now the river starts to flow cleanly and purely and again, we all ride on the, the white water and it's just a great adventure. Um, real life tells us that that's not always the case, that, uh, that, that uh, sometimes I go and ask for forgiveness and there's still resentment or there's still bitterness or even someone says you're forgiven but they're not really forgiving me. Um, and, and of course there is no, there's no simple answer to that. In, in a very real sense, that's a reflection of the way we've treated God. I mean, he has taken the first move to mm -hmm. us and um, we, many of us have yet to respond. He doesn't stop. He didn't say, okay, going once, twice, you're, you know, he continues to forgive, continues to extend grace to us. And that's what Paul means when he said, you know, forgive as Christ forgave you. Because otherwise I'm, I'm apt to go, look, I, I've given you every opportunity to get this right. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, 
it's not about how they respond to me. It's about how God responded to me. And, and so I need to forgive as, as, um, as Christ uh, you know, bought my forgiveness and God forgave me on the cross. That, that, that's, again, kind of goes back to that conversation that Peter had with Jesus, you know, how many times you're supposed to give. And, mm -hmm. you know, and Jesus said 70 times seven, which was kind of a way of saying, just keep on forgiving and keep on forgiving. I think um, as parents, this is one of the real struggles. Um, I was just talking with a mom about this a couple of nights ago at a parents conference, parents uh, event, how her two sons, you know, she's a single mom and her two sons um, are both teenagers. And, um, you know, who knows what they've been through and growing up without a dad and so forth. But mm -hmm. she said that, you know, they're just constantly flexing their muscles and there's, she just feels like they, they just treat her badly. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't make that go away. And, and taking initiative might not make that go away. That was the whole premise of my sort of illustration that I can't affect you know, the behavior of the person on that side. And it can't affect the person on that side. I can only affect me. But I have to figure out, what am I going to do from here? Am I going to be absorbed and, 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 you know, with bitterness and let that suck the life out of me? Or am I going to say, no, I am going to continue to take initiative and do what I can. But at the end of the day, um, I said to her, you know, I think in some ways parenting is... Is, is is probably the closest to that kind of situation where you feel like you're extending grace, you're taking initiative. And hey, nobody hung around to say thanks. Nobody said, you know what, you're right, mom, I did need that correction. <laughs> By golly, thank you for getting me to come in earlier. You know, you know, you know you're not hearing that uh, affirmation very often. I think a lot of times parenting, I always say it's the closest most of us will come to crucifixion because you, you reach out your arms to embrace them. And then it, sometimes it feels like they hammered a nail, you know, right into your hands. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what unconditional, you know, God-like love looks like. And if we can appreciate how that feels to us, we can only begin to appreciate how that must feel to a Heavenly Father when we don't respond to His acts of grace. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Duffy. Yeah. Thanks for being here. And thank you for watching Postscript with our great friend, Duffy Robbins. Have a great Mother's Day and a great week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.